Greetings. I'm Felicity, and I've reached the age of 37. Allow me to recount an intriguing experience and how I swiftly handled it, as I'm not one to be deceived. Contrary to many tales I've encountered, surprisingly, I had a good relationship with my mother-in-law. Before everything unraveled, our bond was smooth, filled with warmth, perfection, and mutual respect. My husband, Frank, was the love of my life, my partner in crime, and my best friend. From my perspective, everything seemed picture perfect. This isn't a delusion or oversight on my part. Sure, we had our arguments like any normal family, but there were no red flags and all seemed well. However, the shocking turn of events that followed left me bewildered. Let me narrate the incident and explain why I chose to seek revenge on my husband and mother-in-law. I had planned something special for our family, a vacation originally meant for Frank and me. However, considering Tiana, my widowed sister-in-law, and her loneliness, I decided to include her. I sponsored most of the trip, covering accommodation, meals, and activities. Frank and Tiana were only responsible for their additional expenses. The plan was to treat them to a once-in-a-lifetime vacation in Spain, exploring Barcelona's vibrant streets, savoring tapas, and enjoying the Mediterranean sunshine. The thought of creating lasting memories and strengthening our bond excited me. Little did I know that this grand adventure would lead to events that shook the foundation of trust and shattered the illusion of our perfect family. Backtracking to that fateful day, filled with hope and promise for our Spanish dreams, I stood in the living room holding plane tickets with a smile on my face. Gathering Frank and Tiana, I revealed the surprise. They exchanged puzzled glances, curiosity etched on their faces. Tiana, with her wise eyes, tilted her head slightly. With a flourish, I presented the tickets and shared my plans for our Spanish adventure, hoping to see joy and gratitude in their eyes. Frank's face lit up, expressing genuine anticipation. Felicity, you truly are something else, he exclaimed. Anticipation bubbled within me as I eagerly awaited the commencement of our extraordinary journey. Tiana, on the other hand, donned a gentler smile, her gaze meeting mine. Oh, my sweet Felicity, you've truly outdone yourself. This is a gift beyond measure. I'm deeply touched, she expressed. In that moment, pride and contentment swelled within my heart. Their reactions were a validation of the love and effort I had poured into this surprise. I had envisioned this vacation as the adhesive that would strengthen our bonds, creating unforgettable memories and fortifying the already seemingly unbreakable ties. However, as you might suspect, this tale takes a treacherous turn. Beneath the facade of our seemingly idyllic relationship, a complex web of deceit and betrayal lay in wait, ready to ensnare us all. When the truth unraveled, it would challenge the limits of forgiveness and test the very essence of family bonds. As planned, we boarded the plane, embarking on our two-week adventure. The anticipation was palpable as we immersed ourselves in the vibrant streets and rich tapestry of Spanish culture. The first week unfolded seamlessly with the flavors of pala, exploration of historic landmarks, and dancing to the infectious rhythms of flamenco. Laughter and joy filled the air, and I reveled in the belief that our bond was unbreakable. However, little did I know that a storm was brewing on the horizon, waiting to unleash its fury upon my unsuspecting heart. On a fateful Monday morning, as the sun bathed the city in golden hues, I woke up to find an empty hotel room. Confusion and a growing sense of unease gripped my heart. Frantically, I reached for the phone, dialing both my husband's and Tiana's numbers, hoping for an explanation. But to my dismay, their phones remained silent, their voices absent. Fear began to claw at the edges of my mind as I searched the empty room for any sign of their presence. 
No notes, no bags, no traces of disturbances or struggle, just an unsettling silence that hung heavy in the air. It seemed I was left alone in a foreign land, and the minutes felt like an eternity as despair threatened to consume me. A glimmer of hope pierced through the darkness. My phone buzzed, signaling an incoming call. It was Tayana. Relief washed over me, mingled with confusion and a deep sense of hurt. How could she leave without a word? With trepidation, I answered the call, my voice filled with a mix of concern and disbelief. Tiana, where are you? What happened? I questioned. Tiana's voice, tinged with a strange mix of resignation and frustration, reached my ears. However, it wasn't the same sweet voice I had always known. It sounded colder. Felicity, Tiana said, I felt the need to return your call since my phone was incessantly ringing. Oh, I'm sorry for disturbing you, I replied. I was just wondering where you two went. Your bags aren't here, and I was concerned that something bad had happened. With an indifference that shook me to the core, she uttered the next words. We left you. But why? What happened? I couldn't bear to spend another week in your company, so I had to leave. Did I do something wrong? I asked, struggling to understand. Yes, she said sharply. I mean, how could you be so dense? You sprung this trip on me, practically forcing me to go with you. I couldn't remain disingenuous any longer. Let me spell it out clearly for you, Felicity. I don't enjoy your company. Sure, we can spend a couple of hours together at a family event, but two weeks. I tried to be civil and grace you with my presence for as long as I could. Turns out I could only manage one week with you before I lost my mind. I'm sorry, but I'm on the way to the airport with Frank right now. We can't be around you any longer. Shock reverberated through my core as the revelation struck me like a bolt of lightning, unraveling the threads of trust I had so naively woven. How could our seemingly unbreakable bond crumble beneath the weight of unspoken grievances? Questions flitted through my mind as I grappled with this harsh reality. What had I done wrong? What exactly did I do to deserve such harshness? How did things escalate to this point? Was there no chance for reconciliation? Confusion and heartache intertwined within me, the pain of betrayal seeping deep into my soul. I didn't know you felt this way, Tayana. Honestly, man, you had no reason to. I'd always led you to assume that things were fine and dandy between us. Why not bring that up? Why not sit me down so that we could hash out whatever problem there was between us? Because if I'm being honest, I still don't know what I've done to wrong you. That's the thing, Tayana replied. I just can't put my finger on it, but you just irk me. What? That's the most childish thing I've ever heard. You can't stand me just because of some inexplicable irk. Grow up, Tayana. I thought I offended you or something, but I didn't do anything wrong, right? Not necessarily, but it doesn't matter. What matters is how I feel about you, and I feel that you're annoying. I just can't stand being around you. If that's the case, then why did you say yes to coming with us on this trip? Because it was a free trip to Spain. No one is going to turn down that opportunity. But as the days went by, I grew more and more tired of your antics. What antics, Tayana? What did I do that was so bad that you decided to leave me all alone in a foreign country? She failed to answer, and I grew more impatient with this impromptu disdain coming out of nowhere. I was shocked, hurt, confused, and angry. But most of all, I was just sad. I had to inquire about my beloved husband and what he had to say in all of this. Let me speak to Frank, I requested casually and easily. Tiana passed the phone to Frank. He responded with the same indifference and coldness as his mother. Hello. Really, Frank? You decided to leave me too. I didn't leave you because I don't like you. 
I left because my mom needed me to take her home. So you knew about all of this. For some time now, I was hoping this trip would bring her closer to you, but I was wrong. Okay, but what I'm failing to understand is why none of you approached me about this. We're all adults. If there's an issue, we solve it. It's not like we haven't had arguments in the past. We sat down and solved those arguments. What's different about this time? Frank failed to answer, mirroring his mother's earlier silence. The only thing I can safely conclude about this entire debacle is that your mother hates me for a silly reason which she knows isn't valid. Maybe she's jealous of me or something. Maybe I have something she can't have, and she knows she can't speak up about it without sounding foolish, so she's beating around the bush. Am I correct in assuming that? Their resounding silence affirmed my assumption. Well, I can say that I'm honestly shocked. I didn't know that you two felt this way about me. I hope you have a safe flight back home. I cut the call and paced around the hotel room, still trying to understand the issue. As I contemplated whether I deserved this treatment, I realized that 37 years on this planet had taught me that sometimes people hate for no apparent reason, driven by jealousy or bitterness. It's not uncommon, but the last people I expected this behavior from were my own family. After sobbing for some time, I had an epiphany that took me back to the moment when I decided to take control of my destiny and seek vengeance against those who wronged me without cause. It was a pivotal moment that would forever change the course of my life. Wiping away my tears, a newfound determination welled up within me. I refused to waste any more precious emotions on their actions. It was time to show them they couldn't trample over my heart and get away with it. With trembling fingers, I dialed my childhood friend Arlo's number, knowing I could trust him with my darkest secrets. After pouring out my heart and explaining the painful betrayal, I cautiously asked if he could assist me in my quest for justice. Arlo, always the loyal and mischievous friend, listened intently. His voice was filled with a mix of concern and excitement, reassuring me that he had my back. Felicity, my dear friend, you're a force to be reckoned with, and you know you can count on me for anything and everything. So what are you planning on doing? Well, Arlo, you know how your construction company always has excess sawdust. Yes, it can be quite a hassle to get rid of sometimes. I believe I've found the perfect use for it. His curiosity piqued. I unraveled my plan like a carefully crafted script, detailing how we would execute the ultimate act of retaliation. Bags of sawdust would be delivered to Tayana's house, infiltrating every corner and crevice, leaving an indelible mark of chaos and betrayal. Arlo couldn't help but smile at the brilliance of my idea a subtle yet impactful reminder to Tiana of the stress she had unleashed upon my life. Armed with Arlo's expertise and my newfound determination, we set our plan into motion. The question arose, how would we get inside the house before they returned? You need to get the spare key hidden under the potted plant on the patio. Then you'll be in, Arlo advised. Wow, you thought of everything, huh? I'm not one to be played with. I think I'm a reasonable woman, but if they want to go lower and act childish, then I'll go even lower. As the hours passed, anticipation swirled within me. Arlo assured me that the mission was complete and soon I would witness the fallout of our carefully orchestrated chaos. Then like a sweet melody in my ear, my phone chimed with a message from Arlo. I eagerly opened the pictures he had sent revealing a sight to behold. Tiana's once pristine home now resembled a post-apocalyptic wasteland drowned in a sea of sawdust. Every nook and cranny had been touched by our mischievous hands. A scene straight out of a surrealistic painting, an embodiment of the chaos that had unfolded in our lives. I called Arlo and his laughter echoed through the phone. I couldn't help but join in. It was a cathartic release, 
a shared moment of triumph against those who had betrayed me. I expressed my heartfelt gratitude to Arlo, acknowledging his willingness to tread the path of mischief with me. He simply said, Naughty can be so satisfying, my friend. As the clock ticked away, I could feel the tension building within me. How would Frank and Tiana react when they walked through the doors of their once beloved home? The anticipation was almost unbearable, a heady mix of nerves and vindication. I couldn't help but relish the thought of their bewildered faces and disarrayed emotions. Hours later, my phone erupted with frantic energy. It was Frank, his voice laced with panic and disbelief, as he described the chaotic scene that awaited them. The sawdust-covered house stood as a testament to their betrayal. My heart danced with wicked delight as I listened to his exasperated voice. At that moment, I knew the message had been received loud and clear. Their actions had consequences, and the chaos they had sown had come back to haunt them. Felicity, it's just awful. Mom is in hysterics. I decided to reveal the part I played in this. It serves both of you right. How could you leave me here alone without a valid reason, no less? Wait, Felicity, was this your doing? The wailing and panic in the background stopped, and instead, I heard my mother-in-law shout, Give me that. She then screamed into the phone, How could you do this to us? To me. I have no idea what you're talking about. Have you considered that this is just your karma? Oh, come on, Felicity. We all know it was you. Who else would have access to my home? It's very easy to break into someone's home nowadays, Tiana, especially if you don't have any security cameras installed. Which, by the way, you should seriously consider doing to prevent things like this from happening again. Honestly, Felicity, how can you do this to us? When are we supposed to sleep? This sawdust is making my lungs ache. Oh, that's right. You probably forgot to get the keys to my house. Well, that's a shame. I guess you two are going to have to stay in yet another hotel. But for how long? Until I decide to come back from my vacation, I guess. I mean, I paid for two weeks, after all. And who knows, I might feel greedy and decide to extend my stay. Frank then took the phone from Tiana, who began to bawl once again, mourning her ruined furniture. Felicity, this was foul. How could you do this? I don't know why you're assuming that I had anything to do with this. I mean, how could I? I'm currently relaxing in the hotel jacuzzi. How could I have done this? I held back my laughter as the two of them were clearly confused about what had happened even though they suspected I had something to do with it. They didn't have any solid proof, so I basked in all the glory of knowing they were frustrated but had nowhere to direct their anger. As I bid Frank farewell on the phone, a sense of contentment washed over me. I had taken control of my narrative, leaving them to grapple with the consequences of their actions. I knew what I did was quite foul and even dangerous considering Tiana's age. Spending even a night in that house could lead to serious health consequences. But I knew they wouldn't dare to dream of staying there. It was too sabotage to be habitable. They just had to rely on staying in a hotel for a little bit longer. Because I didn't want my money to go to waste, I stayed that extra week in Spain, enjoying the culture as I intended while my husband and mother-in-law were undoubtedly worried trying to find a cleaning company that would take on such a daunting task. I didn't know how long it would take to get the house professionally cleaned, but I knew that in the meantime, my mother-in-law would have to stay with us at my home. She would undoubtedly be irritated the whole time, considering she apparently couldn't stand my company. This should serve as a reminder to some of you. Some people need to learn the hard way. And if it just so happens that you can dish out your own justice, then by all means, go ahead and do it. Really give people something to be mad about.